snow watch, day six. We got snow, check it out. Ah, just shitting you. Holy shit, wish we got snow. All right, well let's have at her in this shop. Still having fucking door problems. Let's see if I can break in today. Ah, there we go. Yeah. It is, uh, what is it today? It is Wednesday. Uh, I think I gotta change that fucking door knob. I've, I've already broken two keys off in that door within just this month. Well, actually, no, it couldn't have been this month. Just last month, I should say. Uh, so I gotta figure out what's wrong with this thing. It's just, something's up with that knob. Listen, it's gotta be something. Day one since I've had it, and it's always been a problem with it, so I gotta get new fucking door handle knob thing for this thing. Seriously, just something fuck with this thing. It just doesn't want to catch right. I've already tried filing down the edges and different things. It's like, holy. <sighs> Gotta figure something out. Maybe I should just start fucking using the son of a bitch up top. Never even thought about doing that. Oh. Uh, but anyway, I got some mail today. Uh, I got... Some more of these uh, carb gaskets. I'm just trying to get out of the package here. I'll show you guys one of these. These are the uh, these little Tecumseh carb kits I get off of eBay. You get like a 10 pack for 26 bucks. Well, that's a fucking good deal. I gotta tell you guys that. If you're definitely gonna be doing this shit, buy your shit off of eBay because it saved me so much money. So I'll stab these. Oh, hey, don't move on me. Move this thing forward. Put the screwdriver there. So yeah, I got ten of them. Any more? Nope. So I only had like three left, so I had to get a couple of these. Put these sons of bitches in my drawer. So there's one, two, and that makes three right there. But I got some old stupid weed eater parts and Briggs parts. What else we got in here? Uh, Banshee carburetor kit, rebuild kit, yeah. More gaskets, gasket, oil seals, Briggs parts. I got all kinds of shit. I got some more up on the wall. I got like a box somewhere in this garage that's filled with a bunch of uh, Briggs and Stratton. Carb gaskets. I haven't found it since I did the remodel in this place. Can't figure out where the fuck it's at, but somewhere in the shop there's a box. Probably a little bit smaller than this. And it's got, uh, it's got all the gaskets in it. Can't find it anywhere. It kind of sucks because I get it really cheap off eBay. I think I only paid like 40 bucks for it for like a box of like 150. So, you gotta find that sometime. Just like magically ran away. But anyway, so today we're going to be working on this uh, Arians. Uh, we're going to be just pulling the motor off of it. And that's pretty much about it. Um, yeah, someone with a suggestion. Uh, I always forget your usernames, guys. I, I, feel, I feel so bad for it. But uh, one of you guys suggests that you should just use one of the motors over here. Well, yeah, we should. We have a motor, but uh, it's just the factor of the rust. The way how it works is like this city that I'm in is just fucked over big time. It's mainly because I'm right outside of Boston. I could throw a fucking rock at Fenway Park if I really wanted to, but then again, Fenway Park's about two minutes away or five minutes away, whatever you want to call it. But everyone around here has to have nice pieces of equipment. They don't like rusty pieces of equipment. Um, I figured that out. I have that track driven craftsman that's out here. Not my big 1032, but my little guy, my 824. Um, no one even wants to buy that for 200 bucks. You know, it's because it has a little rust on the top. So I'm going to have to bring that in the shop later on in the week. Hit it real quick in a couple spots and, uh, and uh, just make it look a little bit pretty. But holy shit, hey, look at the chooch. I guess you can tell what the head gasket leak is. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, so we're going to pull this motor off, and that's it, pretty much for it. Um, 
Now we're just going to sell the chassis separate and probably just use the motor for parts or something or use it for like a short block and leave it at that. But I gotta get this fire going. I gotta get a fire going because it's fucking cold as fuck out. Um, I was hoping my oil filter would have came from my uh, Husqvarna today. Uh, Husqvarna's over here at this time. I moved it yesterday. And that hasn't come in yet, so that kind of sort of sucks, but whatever. What can you do? So. Oh, you kidding me? Ah, oh, son of a bitch. I can't believe we did that. Oh, well. Um. See, so yeah, I'm gonna get this place heated up and uh, we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Alright, well, get the fire ripper on. It's pretty warm in here. I don't even know really why I'm wearing my jacket right now, but I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's just outside, actually. But, um, yes, yeah, so I just got this area. It's pretty much chopped. It's just gonna get for right now. I don't wanna go any further until I really figure out really what's going on with it. So, we got the motor off of it. Uh, I had to strip out this block here. It's just a HM80, uh, one of the old white, or white ones. Uh, the only thing left on it was the flywheel, and I got the flywheel right there, running off of the old points and condensers. And I saved the cover and the points. Uh, everything else was missing. The carb was missing, the gas tank was missing, everything else was just gone. Um, so yeah, that thing's off the scrap here to get figure what's going on with this one. I think I might make this one to a short block. But uh, if you guys have been asking me, how's the uh, wood stove? Well, a scale of 1 to 10 to heat this shop. I rated it at a 9.5. Really strong 8, really low 9. Uh, 10 being the highest and 1 being the lowest, obviously. Um, it's a really great way to heat your shop. I mean, I haven't paid any more than $25 for wood this year. Um, that was just that big little pile of uh, oak that I had. All the wood that I burned this year was free. Uh, I've either gotten it from the, uh, the town of Watertown here, which is the DPW right over there, or, um, or Ideal Fencing, which we just got all those nice cedar posts. Um, Neighbor Jim over here, he's giving me all kinds of wood. Um, all kinds of places have given me wood, so that's pretty sweet. Um, some of it's just oak and stuff like that. Uh, for one of these logs, these big cedar logs, um, surprisingly, I've been getting an hour out of each one. Um, and I would have thought I would have been just burning right through these things within like two seconds. Uh, surprisingly enough though, uh, they're, they're holding its uh, heat on it. Um, I'm getting about an hour out of each log, um, which isn't too bad. And this is probably a six inch log, maybe five inch. They're all pretty much the same diameter. Let's see. Yeah, about five and a half inch. Uh, which way this way? Going this way, it's six. So. I figure an hour is not bad out of uh, cedar. Um, it does actually make the shop smell a whole lot better too when you burn this shit. It actually smells like a cedar mill. So I think that's pretty cool. But uh, what I've been doing, I've been just... Uh, I'll put the skinny pieces in first and then uh, once I really have this thing going like where it's at right now, um, I open up this little top part here and just throw a log in, throw a log in. It works pretty good surprisingly. Um, so far the, the unit has already paid for itself uh, just by heating the place because um, I figured I, I the last time I filled up my propane, my propane tank it was $16 and that was just one of those regular 30, 30 something or other tanks there it's just a little barbecue one I have it somewhere like right out there um, so you figure times that, and I would have chewed through about, oh, about a tank and a half a week. Um, so you guys do the math. I put the whole unit in for right around 700 and something or other dollars. Uh, the stove itself was all done by taxes. It was like at 200. Uh, the black pipe was 10, 15, 20. Um, actually, no, that didn't make any sense. I don't know why I just count by fives. Uh, the the Black pipe here was it was like 12 bucks a piece of 24, and uh, you got 36. Um, 
Then this little black ring that's at the top there, that was about $27. Uh, and then you got the two big stainless steel pipes at the top there, and that alone was, uh, I think, no, it wasn't 100, it was uh, $86, maybe $92 a piece. Um, then you get the flange on the roof was about another $57. Uh, then you get the cap on the chimney, and that was another stainless steel piece, which that was like 42 bucks. And then you just got this regular piece of tin up at the top for, uh, I think that was like 12. So you guys add it all up and you figure right around 700 and something dollars. Uh, I could be wrong, I really never really added it up. Um, then I have it raised on the blocks and each block was about a buck 25 a piece and a sixth there, so. Yeah, but it's, it's doing its job. It's putting off some serious amount of heat, um, which is really good, so I'm not really complaining. So it smokes a little bit at first when you uh, when you throw the wood in. Um, and that's just when it gets fired up, but after that it's just, uh, it's just a steady, steady stream of heat, you know. Um, the only reason why I raised it up on the ground was just in case I spilt something like what I did over here. This is just a little bit of water and oil. Um, I spilled a little bit out of there. And uh, I didn't want to, you know, just be safe. I raised it up a little bit. Um, different things like that. So that's pretty much the only reason why I raised it up. And actually it's nicer when I raised it up because that was not as low to the ground as it would be to load wood in. It's more up more. Um, so it's pretty good. But I haven't had any problems with it yet, so that's pretty sweet. Probably uh, do a good cleaning on the thing within uh, maybe next month or something. Just stick the broom that they gave me when it came with this little unit here and, and just attach it to the drill and just stick it down the chimney and go and it just sweeps it. So I'll probably do that, you know, maybe next month or something if I have a heavy month. Um, so that's kind of like a wood stove update for you guys. A few of you guys have been asking me about it and well, Pretty nice unit, no problems. Uh, some of you guys vent the thing. I was gonna vent it out, go like up to here, and then go out that way, um, but there was really no point on doing that. Um, I've seen a few of you guys do it. In my opinion, the way I have it, it's a little bit set up a little bit nicer. Um, saves money for one thing, and you get more heat out of this deal. If you go through the wall out that way, you're only gonna get boom heat and boom heat. Um, that's it. And then you still have to pay, uh, so you figure it would have needed at least about another three foot piece of stainless. That would have been easy, about another ninety something dollars right there. Uh, then you need like the flange gasket that goes in the wall. You got and then you need the back flange gasket. So the way I have it was cheaper and more efficient. Um, I mean, some some of you guys go right through the back wall, but you know that's that's your deal. Um, I know uh, Arnold there. He, uh, he built his out of uh, two propane tanks, and he has his going this way, um, which, you know, is fine, whatever works, really. Um, we know this one guy, me and Peter know this one guy, uh, he has his wood stove, it goes, the pipes go up, then this way, then this way, then this way again, goes over, then this way, then up, right through his roof. It's the most craziest thing you'll ever see. It kind of looks like something that would come out of the Three Stooges movie when they were doing the uh, the plumbing job when the wires were in the pipes there. But um, yeah, I mean, it puts off some serious heat. I would say the shop is right around, oh, I don't know, 68 degrees, maybe 72. And it's, I don't even know what temperature is out, but it's fucking, it's like fuck you cold out again. Uh, let's see, oh, we got two missed calls here. Uh, yeah, and it's reading 22 degrees out. So, definitely uh, throwing off some heat. It only takes about, oh, I don't know, maybe a half hour, not even really a half hour, maybe, yeah, you know what, about a half hour till the shop really starts to really get warm. Um, and then after that, you just keep it at a steady pace and everything. So, it uh, does its job pretty good, that's for sure. But there's the wood stove update. A few of you guys have been asking on that. Um, if you ask me, I think uh, that guy Fearless Front there, I think he should probably put one in his uh, his yard there. He's up in Maine. So I would make their, it, it really he did shop up pretty good. But um, I've seen him deal with Pisser. I think Pisser should put a wood stove in his shop instead of using those propane tanks. 
but uh, I don't know if he can uh, do that or not because of the uh, the building that he rents. You know, just all depends on where you're at, pretty much. But um, yeah, you know, definitely throws off some serious heat if you don't mind. You know, throwing a few logs in every hour or so, then it's definitely for you. But if you want to spend more money, go ahead, put a furnace in, put a propane heater in, like what I was doing for the past. Oh, I did that for at least seven years. I had different propane heaters. I tell you what, though, this shop has evolved um, compared to what I was working at it before. A lot of you guys say, "I say, oh, your shop's a piece of shit. It's only like a 16 by 16." Blah, blah, blah. You know what? I don't give a shit. You know, I'm in a heated garage with fucking cable, and you can't beat it. Uh, my shop used to be. I'll show you where it used to be. Let's see if I can find the floor marking. I think it was right here. Could that be right? Uh, yeah, right here. Cause there's that line right there. So from here to where my foot is, is probably right around six feet. Um, to that wall to where my foot is. That's how wide my shop used to be. And from pretty much right where my finger is, kind of sort of about four inches away from that center beam, on the metal door and so that window is that used to be my shop that was it um, this place used to just be filled with with just garbage um, I mean they, they used to be like a toolbox in that wall my dad used to have his motorcycles up on that wall and it was just trash all in this area and always remember trash up there and there used to be a loft way up in the ceiling here um, that was just all trashed, and that all happened when my grandfather died, because no one ever really came in the garage after that. Then I came along, I made a little small area, and then, a little, then it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then that's how I pretty much got the whole shop for myself, you know, no one really cared too much for the garage, I'm the only one that kept it up. So that's how I have my shop, that's another story, you know, that's just how I got it. Uh, me and PJ, we used to have this little tiny shed right here, it used to be right in the back. Um, and that was, uh, shit, that thing was fucking massive. That thing started out from a 8 by 4 shed by, and then we expanded it to like a 16 foot by, oh, at least, I want to say it was a 16 by 8 shed. And then uh, we tore it down because it had a fucking outrageous amount of dry rot. The floor fell in, so... Then, uh, then we took over this building, so yeah, but I gotta hurry this up because I'm probably killing you guys on talking wise, but there's a little uh, shop history for you guys. Oh, never knew that about me. Alright, so I figured I'd uh, show you on how that log made out. That's pretty much what's left of it. Uh, it's not this one, it's kind of sort of the one under it. Because I threw this one after. But that's pretty much it right there. If you can see where my fire poker is, it goes right along here. Um, there's a little chunk of it left right there. So it's been about an hour. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, let's see what it's telling you. Yeah, see, it's 253. I think the last time we checked it was like 148. Wait, did I just say 253? What the fuck? It's 1043. I don't know what I was just thinking. But um, yeah, so that just goes to show you what one log will get you. Probably about an hour's worth, so I'm going to throw another log in. Um, just got done doing some oddball shit here and there. Just had to neaten up the loft a little bit. Uh, stuff started falling on me, so I was like, you know what, fuck it. Fuck it, can't take it. Gotta go clean it. So I neatened up some things. I got those tires neatened up, and then I had this one tire up in the loft. So I... Uh, I took it off the rim, and what did I do with that rim? Oh, it's over there. So yeah, there's the rim over there. So I just uh, popped that off. So that was pretty sweet. Got the chain on from outside. This thing was fucking frozen to the ground. That's just great. Um, I decided to save a little piece of this track uh, just for a little bit of a grip when I go to load the snowmobiles into the trailer. I rode up in uh, New Hampshire there, so I figured it just save me a little bit of time. Even though the uh, the trails already has the grips on it, but I figured just take that just in case we had any problems. Um, that's what we're looking at. I'm gonna go in the uh, basement 
to do some little surgery. It turns out our heater is pretty much just the bed. So we gotta had to call the heat and dick. The heat and dick should be by in about an hour or so. Figure out what the hell's going on. We have one of those uh those like ancient 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 really old uh boiler things. It's a, like it's the original one to the house house. It has all asbestos in it. You know, it's that type deal. It's it's pretty grimy looking too. So that thing there finally shit the bed. I think we're gonna get a if they can't find the part that we need then they're gonna be uh we're gonna have to replace the boiler. It's just wonderful. Um it, it's just a it's like a little valve that releases the pressure into the water. I don't know. But they said if they can uh find the part, pretty much we're tough shit out of luck. So yeah. Oh, that'd be a nice little heavy piece of scrap metal. Yeah. Those fuckers ain't taking that. But I'm gonna get back to doing what I was doing. Just kinda of neatening up things and uh yeah. Well, figures the one time I gotta use the really, really good camera to take a fucking photo. Fucking battery's dead on it. Holy shit. Now I gotta find the charger for this sucker. That fucking sucks. I'm getting ready to put this uh this big auger unit that we have back here on Craigslist, I mean on eBay for an auction. I'm gonna start the auction at like a hundred bucks. Hopefully we get more than a hundred, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, I just got done clean this thing up and I take a few photos of it, but I can't take the photos because, well, fucking battery's dead. Figures, just like every other camera, they're all dead. So now I gotta go grab the charger and hopefully I take the charge for 8 a.m., I mean 8 p.m. tonight, because 8 o'clock is when I have to start uploading the videos and different things, but man, it's fucking hot in here. Holy. All right, let's get the charge for this uh, thing. This thing takes pretty good photos. It's uh, Olympus or something other like that. Got like 30x zoom. Yeah, optical zoom. Uh, but I gotta get the battery charger thingy for that. Unless I have a spare battery, I'll jab it in there, but I doubt it. So, uh, yeah. Oh, fucking son of a bitch. Well, I think this is one of my most favorite spots in the shop. Oh, yeah. It's so warm. <laughs> Just got in from taking the photos of that thing up there. So that's pretty awesome. Got to charge, charge late the battery, so we get that thing going. Um, but yeah, so I just called up one of the power equipment places where I usually get all my stuff from. And well, they said they didn't have much. Uh, they said if you want, you're welcome to come up, take a look. But there really isn't much apparently. So there really isn't much. Is usually around four or five machines, and to me, that's quite a bit enough for me. Um, so I'll probably take a swing up there maybe Friday or something, see what they got. Uh, they said they picked up some dirty old tractor, I guess. Um, said it was really old. So I'll be pretty interested now in seeing if it's maybe another, I don't know, who knows, it could be another Wheelhouse 500 special. Woo! Yeah. Oh, wait, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that's possible. Um, but he said he's got some really old tractor out there and just a couple of oddball things. So I like oddball things, so I'll take a peek at that, so um, maybe go up there Friday or something. Uh, I gotta get some money together. Different things like that, because money's always, you know, money's always a big factor in the world. Oh, that's so warm. My fingertips are freezing. Probably should have worn the gloves. But um, yeah, so I'm done for the day. I know this hasn't been really great so far start of the year of making videos, but uh, hopefully by the weekend we'll have some good stuff in. Get back on the loop here. Different things like that. Uh, I'm talking to this one dude, one of my neighbors. He's from Texas. He might be uh, renting his garage to me. Um, it's not like a shop like this or nothing. It's just, it's just a garage, maybe a little bit bigger than this. Um, just some like a store, some stuff in. So I might, uh, might do that and purchase that off of him or rent it off of him. He hasn't fully come, I've, I've already given him a price and he's just doing and on about it. So he just needs to make up his mind. If not, then I'll add a little bit more money to the table, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I'm only doing it just so I can uh, put the Han and my wheel horse and the Burns and my LT1000 in that uh, garage. Just just so that way I know this safe not going to get harmed by like winter, mother nature, stuff like that. 
Uh, I might throw I might throw the, the uh, Z440 in there because I'm not really trusting this tree lately. It's uh, it's looking a little bit scary. That's uh, so I'm gonna leave that that. But um, yeah, so if he takes it, that'll be awesome. If not, then whatever. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, so until tomorrow. Hopefully it might snow. I don't know. I've already checked the weather forecast. Don't look like snow, so whatever. What can you do? So you guys until tomorrow. We'll be uh, talking to you guys later. Oh, look at that. It's a girly Tecumseh. It has a hole in it. Huh. Alright guys. Uh, well, I was going to end the video. Well, actually I already did end the video, but I just got in the house and uh, I was getting ready to upload the video. Well, not upload it, just getting ready to compress the video. Um, hold on a second. Let me check something. Ooh, shit, that's fucking hot. Alright, at least still going just a little bit. But, um, yeah, so I just got in the house. I wanted just to, uh, you know, compress the video, get everything, you know, rendered and everything. And, uh, you know, it's on the computer. And first video I clicked. It's uh, Mustiel 323. Um, well, guys, I don't do this a lot, and you guys all know that for a fact. Um, I'm pretty fussy when I do this. I I give a shout out to certain users. You know, I'll just randle their names. Like the other day, it was a uh, diecast collector. I was doing a little talking about him, but um, I want to give a shout out to someone. Someone that's been subscribed to me right up to pretty much almost day one of making YouTube videos. I mean, there's um, there's only five really on YouTube that have stuck with me the whole friggin' time that I've been on YouTube. And uh, Miss Mustiel323 has been subscribed to me for a little over a year and a half now. Um, so I want to give him a shout out. He's looking for some... Uh, some new subscribers. Uh, his subscribers that he has really aren't really all that great. Um, so I wanted to give a shout out to him, and he wants uh, he wants some help, guys. He wants to know what um, what he should be putting out for videos and stuff like that. He he does tractor videos. He I mean he doesn't have like um, he doesn't have a shop. He doesn't work on stuff. He just kind of sort of tinkers around with stuff and um, pretty much just romps with them. He has a bunch of uh, MTD tractors, yard machines, and stuff like that. Um, stuff like that. So definitely, um, definitely check him out. I'm gonna put the link link below. Um, I guess right now he's not really having really a great time on YouTube. So if you subscribe to him, whatever. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just saying check him out. Uh, I want to give him a shout out. I usually don't give out people shout outs because I don't know, I just really not my thing. Maybe I should start getting into like maybe a shout out a week or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's just up in the air, but I mean I am pretty fussy when it comes to giving shout outs. And it takes a lot to give people shout outs. Um I mean reason being is there there are certain YouTubers out there I just do not like in general. You know, there's other things. But, um, you know, definitely um, check him out. I'm going to put the link below and uh, check him out. Check out his channel. He's got a couple of tractors. And uh, give him some ideas on what you guys want to see. Um, he's open to suggestions. So, check him out. So, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to now finish parsing all the data together in this video. Uh, and different things like that. And this uh, place is still pretty much warm. So, that's pretty awesome. But, uh, yeah, so definitely check them out. I'm going to put the link below, and uh, we'll get back at it tomorrow. Do a few more things, so, yeah. Oh, still pretty warm in here, yeah.